the old street. Wet, dirty, senseless murder. Why do they have to be twins, Estelle and Linda? Forget it. Linda's dead. I'll just have one more look at Estelle and that'll be the end of it. The old room. Wonder who's living in it now. Bet they never heard of Dixon or me. That'll be okay, too. I'll just have a beer and say hello to old Tim. Hi, Tim. Well, well, but it ain't Michael Card. I'm glad to see you, my boy. How you been, Tim? Fine, fine. You coming back to this neighborhood again? No, I'm just keeping a date with somebody. Shall I guess who? That's right. Special occasion? I don't know. Maybe. I haven't seen her in six months. After all that stuff in the papers, I figured we'd better have some time to wipe the ghosts out of our eyes. So I told her to meet me here at this bar at half past eight. Six months from that night. This is it. That's good. That's good. I guess I'm a little early. What do you have? Two beers, Tim. Still up to your old tricks, huh? Mm-hmm. Bourbon on the side for me. She probably won't even remember the day we made. Oh, I am not too sure about that. Women have memories like elephants. She was in here once or twice while you were gone. Alone? No. She sat there right where you're sitting now. And she says to me, two beers, just like you did. Hey, Tim, two more of the same. Excuse me. Wonder who she's playing around with now. As if I cared. But she did order two beers like old times. She must have been thinking of me. Why don't I get out of here before I get tangled up again? It's not too late. I remember that girl, Goodwill. Say, there was a fellow by the name of Dixon mixed up in this some way, wasn't there? Yeah, he was my roommate. So don't you read the papers? Of course. But that was the time of the World Series, and that is pretty important, too. But all kidding aside, Mike, there was a lot of stuff in the newspapers, but I couldn't get head in the tail of it. Nobody could. Say, so you and this Dixon were pretty good friends, weren't you? We were in the Army together, that's all. He was my lieutenant, and I was only a corporal. Nobody in the outfit liked him very much. You must have. Rooming with him the way you did? That was just one of those things. I bumped into him after he got out of the hospital with a psycho discharge. Is that so? Yeah. He'd had a run-in with a mortar shell during the Battle of the Bulge. Blew a fountain pen clear through his shoulder and knocked him goofy. Once he found out I had the place across the street, I couldn't shake him anymore. He was scared to death to go home and have his folks see him in the shape he was in. Still used to go all to pieces ever so often. Of course, he couldn't hold down a job for very long. So all he did between spells was drink and chase around with dames. That's how he got to be my roommate. Not that I wanted any part of him, but... Well, I guess that's the way it is with guys who've been in a war together. You put up with a lot of things without knowing why. Come in, Doc. bother you, but I'm looking for my sister Estelle, Estelle Mitchell. I'm Linda. Yeah. Isn't this where Johnny Dixon lives? Yeah. Are you Mr. Carr? That's right. I thought she might be over here, so I just dropped around to pick her up. Did she say she was coming over here? Why, well, I thought I heard her say so to Johnny on the phone. She isn't here. Perhaps they're out someplace. Thanks, anyway. Oh, wait a minute. Johnny's right here. 
been sick all evening. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? No, thanks. Oh, come in, Doc. Good evening. Wait, I'll be with you in a minute. You fixed him up once before, Doc, so I guess you know what's wrong. He's been awful nervous lately. Anything you want, call me, will you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's wrong with Johnny? He looks awfully sick. Oh, it's nothing serious. He'll be okay tomorrow. Shall I tell him you were here? I'd rather you didn't. I'm a little embarrassed about the whole thing. Well... Tell me. Something I don't quite understand. Why should Johnny be going out with your sister if he's always talking about you? I guess you don't know my sister. Oh, I guess I don't. Wait, I'll take you home. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Carr. Mike. Johnny's told me a lot about you. He says you're the only friend he has. Sure you don't want me to take you home? No, thanks. It's only a couple of blocks. Okay. Night. Night. That was London. I might have known that she looked exactly like a sister of Stell. After all, they were twins. Only Linda was the nicer of the two. And I lied to her when I told her I didn't know Estelle because I did. I found out later that Linda went straight home after she left me. Her mother and sister were in the middle of an argument about Dixon. You never think of me, do you? Sitting here worrying myself sick, not knowing where you are half the time. And so many dreadful things happening to girls nowadays. Just you wait, young lady, until you have a daughter of your own. Maybe then you'll understand. Oh, for Pete's sake, Mother. Don't you think I'm old enough to take care of myself? At it again, huh? I had to work late. Johnny came along and wanted to bring me home. So I let him. He's crazy about me. What's wrong with that? He'll be the death of me yet. Boy crazy. I thought he was supposed to be in love with Linda. Can I help it if he likes me better? I don't know this Dixon, but he's a fool if he lets you go. Nice of you to think so, Alex. Sorry I messed up our movie date. Oh, that's all right. I played cards with your mother for a while. Alec Tremholt had been on. living with the Mitchells for years. It was just like one of the family. The girls never got along. But now that Estelle knew that Johnny Dixon had given her the gate for Linda, she made up her mind to break him up. That's probably why she left the gold bracelet on the dressing table, so Linda would see it. something new? What do you care? Got a new boyfriend again? If you're really interested to know, it's from Johnny Dixon. Is that where you were tonight? With Johnny? Any objections? You're lying, Estelle. Am I hurting you, dear? For your information, he never went out of his house tonight. He was sick. So that's where you were, spying on me. Get out of here! Johnny didn't give you this bracelet. And he never asked you to marry him. I'm certain of that. Who are you trying to kill? We grew up together. Only you always got the best of everything. Well, I've stopped giving up to you. From now on, I'm taking my share of everything. And I'm beginning with Johnny Dixon. If I want Johnny, I don't have to ask you for it. You've decided you really want him. You can have him over my dead body. I'll remember that, darling. Funny how I got dragged into this mess. The next night I was all settled down to do some studying. And Dixon came home with other ideas. Hi. Hi. Estelle said she had to see me tonight. She said it was important. She's coming up here. Estelle, huh? Don't tell me you're going to start that all over again. No, oh, it's just that I'm scared about him. I don't want her framing me into something. And that's about Linda, and I don't want anything to happen this morning. Mm -hmm. So I've got to see her. Why didn't you tell her to meet your Tim's or someplace like that? It was her idea coming up here. I guess she doesn't want anybody to see us together. And that's all right with me. Sure messes up my studying for Tuesday's class. Look, I, I know it's a big favor I'm asking, but I've got to do it. It's important. I can't go to her house with her mother and Linda around. Don't you see how it is, Mike? What time's she coming? 8.30. It's 
I'm all set now. Thank you. Thanks. Don't let it get to be a habit. The sooner I get this book work done, the sooner I'll get a better job with more dough. I'm trying to get someplace, and that's more important to me than all your dames. Won't happen again, Mike. Don't be sore, will you? Here. Take this five and take in a show and get yourself a couple of drinks. Thanks, anyway. to make a play for me while she was still chasing around with Dixon. Then when he dropped her and switched over to Linda, she and I started going together. I knew there was no future in it. But it was just one of those things when a guy knows it's all wrong but still can't let go of it. Oh! Mike, you scared the life out of me. Where are you going? I gotta talk to Johnny. What about? I Mother asked you to. Your mother asked you to. Well, you're hurting me. Mother wants Johnny to stay away from here. She thinks he's no good for her. What about yourself? I don't get you. Where'd you get this? Like it? Where'd you get it? I bought it myself. You mean Johnny Dixon bought it for you? <laughs> don't lie to me. I saw it on his dresser. I live with the guy, you cheap little chiseler. I didn't ask him to give it to me. You and Dixon make a fine pair. I'm not going to just stand here and let you insult me. I'm not going to let you push me around any longer, yeah? I'm not lying. Johnny and I are all washed up. I was just going up there to give him back his bracelet. And to tell him that Linda's crazy about him and ask him not to hurt her. You know how he is. Give me that piece of jack. Why? I'll handle this and I'll tell him a few more things. Like what? That if he fools around with you on the side any longer, I'll knock his teeth out. It's okay with me. As long as you love me now. I don't know. Let's go somewhere. Wait. Let's see. Hiya, Mike. Hiya, little lady. Hi, Tim. What'll it be? Two beers. Coming up. Let's play the machine, huh? You know how she worries. Got another nickel? Thanks. Well, 
Take it now. Yeah. Okay. One of the greatest fighters I ever saw. Well, there was no one that could touch him. I've got to go home, Mike. Mother's all alone and she's worried. How much, Tim? Four feet. Why don't you stay and finish your beer? I'll get home all right. I'll take it. I think I'd better go home alone, Mike. It's only a couple of blocks. Mother will be watching from the window. I'll meet you here tomorrow night. We can have the whole evening together. How about it? Is that the way you want it? Yes, darling. I didn't trust her as far as she can throw a box car. I was jealous. All eaten up inside. I've been gone three hours. With enough happening to mess up the lives of six people. won't be dry for a week. How'd you keep yours so dry? You didn't have to clear out of here after all. The spell never showed up. Here. Maybe you can get your dough back on it. How'd you get it? Still. She told you to give it to me? That was my idea. Thought you two were all through. We are. I was going to give it to Linda, but when we had a fight last week, I gave it to Estelle instead. Thought I'd bring her up a little. How do you figure? Estelle and I have been going together ever since you made your switch to Linda. Any objections? Well, that's okay with me. You can have them. Thanks. Now that you know, would you mind sticking to one thing? You'd better tell that to Estelle, too. I'll handle that. Well, I think I'll run over to Max and get a quick one. But it's make your own key. I'm going to bed. Got it. I could see her coming. I demand to speak to Mr. Dixon. He said he was just going down to the corner, but he hadn't come back yet. Don't try to cover up for him, Mike. Tell Johnny it's Estelle, and I want to talk to him. Hey, look, look, Estelle. I wouldn't kid you about this. I know how worried you are, and I'd like to help you, but Johnny just isn't here. Linda isn't home in 15 minutes. We're going to call the police. That's what I'd do if I were you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good night. It's about time.
time you turned up. You go down for a quick one, you stay half the night. Why didn't you tell me Linda was up here? What's the matter? She didn't get home from here tonight. You better get over to this phone and call up her mother, because the last thing she said, she was going to call out the cops. Where is she? How do I know? You better call up her old lady and tell her something, though. I used to my talking to her mother. I can't tell her anything. Do it yourself. You're going to have the cops on your trail. But I didn't do anything. Who said you did? Where were you, McGinnis's? What's the matter with you tonight? Can't you talk? Donnie, you gotta do something about this. You let that girl go home alone, she never got there. Here they are. Cop just came in. Mike, Mike, you gotta stick by me. What do you mean I gotta stick by you? If they should ask you if you saw her leave, tell them that you did. Tell them that you came along just in time to see me at the front door and put her in a taxi. What are you trying to do, make a liar out of me? I didn't see her. I know you didn't. But don't you see the way it is now? No one saw her leave here. She ends here. The shoes were bone dry when I came in. You sure you took her down and put her in a cab? No, I didn't. I was ashamed to let you think I was heel enough not to take her home. But we had a fight about Estelle and she tore out of here like blue blade. Then I heard her whistling from the doorway downstairs. Taxi drove up and stopped. How do you know it's the taxi? I got out to the balcony just as she was getting in. Is it going to hurt you to say you saw it in the corner? That's all I'm asking, Mike. Stick with me. Stick with me. Oh, uh, good evening, boys. Really? Sorry to bother you, but uh, you fellows know anything about a girl named Linda Mitchell? Yeah, no, she was here. She left about a quarter to twelve. I saw it, too. The buckle off a girl's raincoat. Linda's. Smell? Uh, thanks. You didn't take her home, then? No, I, I offered to, but she wouldn't let me. She said she had a raincoat to get a cat. You see, she was kind of still on, on account of something I said. I, I don't know, but she wouldn't let me go with her. You know how women are. They can't sell her. You see her getting the cab? Yeah, I, I was watching from the window over there. You here, too? No, I, uh, I came in right afterwards. Okay, thanks, boys. Good night. Good night, Holmes. I want you to call up Mrs. Mitchell. If you had nothing to do with it, why won't you talk to her? I... I can't. What about this buckle off in this raincoat? What happened? Can I have another one of those, huh? I got home the next day wondering if there'd been any news of Linda and whether Estelle wanted me to keep that date with me. Hi, Jake. Hello, Mr. Carr. What's the trouble? Kid in trouble. They're always messing up the place. Brad. Hello. How'd you get in here? Jake. What goes on? Just waiting for you boys to come home. Which one are you, Carr? That's right. Trying to find out something about that girl who was up here last night. Don't tell me you guys haven't picked her up yet. Suppose you tell me about her. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. I've been standing up all the way home. I don't know very much. It wasn't here. What time did you get home? A little before 12. She had just left. How do you know she just left? Did you see her? Why, well, good as so. How do you mean? When I came around the corner, I saw a cab in front of the house. Saw a girl run out and get in, and the cab drove away. You sure the girl was Linda Mitchell? 
I didn't say it was. It wasn't close enough to tell, and besides, it was foggy. But when I got upstairs a minute later, Dixon said she'd just left in a cab. Draw your own conclusions. How well do you know the Mitchell girl? Which one? Linda. Only met her once. Nice girl. Mm -hmm. What time does Dixon usually get back? He feels like you mostly. Yeah? Well, I'll wait. Make yourself at home. Say, do you mind if I step out and speed? I've been running on a malt and milk since noon. Oh, go ahead. This is just routine. Nothing serious yet. Thanks. So that book you're reading, that's only volume one. If you get through with that, I'll have volume two for you over here in a couple of days. Goodbye. Here. Somebody up there, haven't you? Yeah, a cop. He wants to ask you a few questions. Why don't you go up there and get it over with? Oh, those guys never believe you when you're telling the truth. Look, Johnny, you're doing this thing all wrong. Your play was to notify the cops just as soon as you found out Linda hadn't shown up yet. And if it was me, I'd have raced over there and raised Holy King with Mrs. Mitchell for having the nerve to think that you had anything to do with it. I know, I know. That's what I should have done. Maybe we can go over now, huh? Will you come with me, Mike? Why do you want to get me mixed up in this thing? I've got nothing to do with it. Please, man, come with me. All right, come on, let's get it over with. Hi. Hello. I'm speaking of the devil. Your mother in? She's pretty upset. I don't think she'll buy anything you're selling. We're not selling, we're selling. Come on in. Hi. Yes? Much else to grow out here. You'll forgive me, uh, but you're some fun, aren't you? I mean, nothing out here, baby. Right Mother. here. Good evening, Mrs. Mitchell. This is Johnny Dixon. I do, man. I just brought Johnny over. Well, I... you're Dixon. What have you done with my daughter? What have you done with her? Now, Mother, let him talk. Oh, I, I didn't do anything with your daughter, Mrs. Mitchell. Get out of my house! Daughter, <laughs> please. Now, take me. Johnny was just trying to tell you he had nothing to do with it, Mrs. Hi, Tim. Hiya, Mike. Is there something to set to your dinner? Some brandy, maybe? Two beers. What? Two beers. You take them one at a time, or will you have them both together? I'm not trying to be funny. I've been telling bar for a good many years. I've heard of double gin, and I've heard of double whiskey. I've heard of double or nothing. But I never heard of double beers before. What's the matter? Did you lose your job or something? Nope. Say, Tim, was my roommate in here last night? Dixon? Yeah. He wasn't feeling very well. He wasn't, huh? No, he wasn't able to finish his drink. He said his stomach was upset. He spent most of his time back there in the washroom. Uh-huh. Say, if a little blonde comes in here looking for me, tell her to sit in front of her beer. I'll be right back. Why didn't you say so in the first place? I was only playing a hunch. I remember that buckle Dixon stepped on. But where was a coat? Maybe he tried to get rid of it. This wouldn't be a bad place. It was wet and dark out there. Then I saw something lying in the mud kind of shiny with a hunk of green cloth at one end of it. Mike, 
car been in? He certainly has. Should they be behind that beer at yours? He'll be back in a minute. Good evening, Tim. Good evening, Mr. O'Brien. Hello, Terry. Hello, Max. It was an old stunt I used to do when I was a Put chewing gum on the end of thick and pick up coins through a grate. off Linda's raincoat. Now I was sure Dixon knew more than he was telling. Something burning in here? Somebody must have tossed a lighted cigarette in the basket there. Just put it out. Well, I see you finally made it. Nice of you to show up, too. You know, I don't like waiting around bars all by myself. Any news yet? Not a thing. Come on, let's get out of here. Don't you want your beer? I don't feel like it. Okay. Night, Tim. Oh, what a day I've been through. You saw how Mother was. The police have been in and out all day asking questions. I've tried to call everyone we know. No trace of her, huh? No. They checked all the taxi cab companies. Nothing. I'm going nuts. Mike, do you think Johnny had anything to do with this? I don't know. It's pretty hysterical. He doesn't make much sense. Come on, let's go. Where'd you go last night after you left me? Home. You didn't go to see Johnny Dixon? I know. You weren't home when I talked to your mother the first time. Who'd you call from McGinnis's? It wasn't your mother. Who do you think? I've never known a dame like you. But you kind of like me, don't you, Mike? Frankly, I'd like to break your neck. Why didn't they have her come down instead of having us bring this up here? I don't know. Maybe she couldn't make it. Can anybody identify these clothes? It's Linda. Linda's raincoat. Are you Mrs. Mitchell? <laughs> I didn't stick around to ask any questions. All I wanted was to get out of there. It made me kind of sick because I knew what it meant. Is that you, Mike? down there like you've been acting around here. You didn't do yourself much good. No, I guess I didn't. Let you know yet what's happened. What? Linda's dead. Yeah, I just left the Mitchells. They had her clothes over there for identification. I, I saw the raincoat she was wearing. Just like the one you stepped on, remember? Where'd you get those? What do you think? Mike, you don't think I did it, do you? Why, I was so crazy in love with that girl, I couldn't face her. I tried to tell her so last night, but she thought I was still going for Estelle. We had an awful fight, and she tore out of here. I tried to hold her to talk to her. But she wrenched out of my hand and left those buckles. I don't know why, but I had to get rid of them somehow. I don't get it. We all do foolish things sometimes, don't we? Good luck, Johnny. When you get one of your spells, anything could have happened to you. You might have killed her. 
No, 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 Mike. You've lied so much already, I don't know what to believe. I didn't. I'm getting out of here. Oh, you sap. It's the worst thing you can do. Sit down. You don't know what they did to me down at headquarters. I can't take any more of that. The reason they let me go is because I didn't have anything on me then. But now... Oh, Mike. Give me a chance. Don't you see what you're doing? If you run out on this thing, you're as good as admitting you killed her. If you didn't, the thing for you to do is face it. I can't face it, I tell you. I'm gonna crack up all the way. Just like I did the first time. I just haven't got a chance. I don't know whether you did this or not, but you're entitled to one chance. Don't go out the front way, they'll be watching for you. Go down the back alley. You better try to look like me. Wear your head down forward and keep your hands in your pockets. Got enough dough? A few bucks. Yeah. I'll keep in touch with you, Mike. Thanks. I just soon you didn't. Dixon. Dixon? I don't know. He was here. What do you mean you don't know? Looks like he's gone. Yeah. Who's had and coats this? Uh, Dixon. Where are yours? That's funny. They ought to be around here somewhere. You mean he walked out of here in them? He did, huh? You know he did. What were you doing while this was going on? Shaving. How did I know he's gonna take a duster? Funny time to be shaving. Shave every night. You sure you aren't in on this? Look, what would I get out of it either way, whether he stayed or went? All right, Carr. Put on this hat and coat and come with us. Thanks, I got another one of my own over here. Tell Mrs. Mitchell what happened in front of the house. I saw a girl get into a cab. How did she stop it? She didn't just stand there and wave at it, did she? She whistled, boy. Oh, she whistled, huh? Yeah. Tell her, Mrs. Mitchell. Linda couldn't whistle a note. She tried and tried. We used to laugh about it when she was a little girl. <laughs> so if you heard a girl whistle for a cab, it wasn't Linda. You did not see her come out of that house, nor did anyone else. I'm sorry, but she's in no condition for this sort of thing. Who are you? The doctor? No. I'm sorry. It's Mr. Tremholt, Mr. Heller. He's lived with us for years. Oh, he has. Maybe we should have a little talk sometime, Mr. Tremholt. I'm home every evening. Come on, Carr. So long, Estelle. Night, Mike. Now I want to show you a few things. In case you don't know what that pal of yours did. Linda Mitchell. Here we are, gentlemen. Take a good look, Carr. Twenty-two years old. She's been going around with that pal of yours, and he'd been giving her the brush. Now, here's what I figure happened. She said something that stung him, and he hit her. She ran out of the place, and he ran after her. He caught her on the landing and started to drag her back by her raincoat. She must have screamed because he caught her by the throat. 
finger marks. He thought he'd killed her and it scared him, so he lost his head, dragged her down the hall. Must have heard somebody coming because he hid in the incinerator closet up there. You know those closets in your building and that incinerator chute that goes down the basement. Now listen to this. Dixon pulled down the flap. He tried to jam her body down into the chute head first. Well, she was still alive. He wedged her in there and broke her neck. But the chute wasn't wide enough, so he pulled her out again. See those marks on her forehead? Those aren't bruises. That's brown paint from the side of the chute. Cut out, will you? He finally dragged her out and then hauled her on up to the roof where he found a barrel. So he put her in the barrel and covered her over with the gravel he'd emptied out. Now, do you still want to help a guy that'll do a thing like that? Your roommate? You look like a pretty decent guy to me, Mike. So I'm going to ask you just once more. Where do you think he went? I don't know. Have you got any ideas? Believe me, I'm going to try to find him. If I do, you can have them. All right, Mike, go on home and get some rest. Keep in touch. sure someone was following me. I don't see anybody. I had that awful feeling that somebody was after me. I don't blame you. I got the jitters myself. Let's go inside, huh? I can't take you in there. Where to? The roof. I've just come from police headquarters. I had to identify Linda's handbag. The compact was it. Lipstick. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, I know. Tell her with his questions, questions, questions. Did you tell him about Johnny Dixon? Yes. And about you, too. What'd you tell him? sucker you'd made out of me? Don't say those things to me, Mike. I never meant any harm to anyone. I'm so in love with you. You know that. You never loved anybody in your life except yourself. Not even Linda, your own sister. I did. That's what hurt. Linda was good. Too good. Not at all like me. I keep thinking. 
that if you hadn't stopped me from going up there that night, I might have saved her. It's too late to think about that now. If we could only go back. Go back where we started. Linda alive again. Us in love. Nice and clean and... Something to look forward to. Yeah, if... What are we going to do? I don't know. Maybe we're to blame. But we need each other now. Can't we try it again, Mike? Please be sweet to me like you used to be. Mike. Please. Three days went by and nothing happened. I tried to do some studying, but it was pretty hard to get interested in things like commercial geography. It was Monday night again, and I had a class on Tuesday. I'd been to the library that afternoon and picked up volume two of my textbook. And then I saw something. It was Johnny's handwriting, all right. He knew I had to get volume two out of the library, so he took a chance and wrote a message on the flyleaf hoping I'd see it. I guess he didn't dare call me at the office or at the house. Estelle. Had a little trouble getting away. What's up? He's supposed to call here at 8. It's 5 up now. Any chance of this guy Alec barging in here after you? I don't think so. I'm supposed to be in bed. What are you going to do? Find out where he is and go after him. Are you? What's the matter, nervous? Mike, if you're hurt, why don't you send the cops? If the cops go up there, he might kill himself or get himself killed. He's that kind. I want to bring him back to the apartment to face you. That'll break him down quicker than anything. You game for that? You say so. There's one thing I want to ask you before I do this, and I, I want the truth out of you. What? You didn't go straight home the night Linda was murdered. Where were you? Mike, you don't think that... You were plenty sore at Linda that night. Where did you go? Let's keep the record straight. I got it, Tim. I think it's for me. Hello? Yeah, this is Mike. Yeah, I got your message. No, no one followed me. Yeah, wait a minute. Go ahead, shoot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll be there in a few minutes. Was it? Yeah, but I asked you a question before the phone rang, remember? Believe me, Mike, it's not at all important compared to this. You're wasting time. Who'd you call? Johnny. He said he'd meet me at the corner, so I went down there and hung around for almost an hour. Then I got sore and went home. You may need that alibi later. Hope you can back it up. What do you mean? Never mind. Here's the keys to my place. Go there and wait for us. If I'm not there in an hour, send the cops to this address. Got it? I got it. Who is it? Hey, open up. Anybody see you? Nobody. Go off the front page. Are they still hot for me? Brother, you're hotter than a firecracker. Mike, you're about the only friend I got left that still believes in me. You're wrong. I don't believe in you. What else can I think after the way you've been acting? You tell me you took it down and put her in a cab. 
sidewalks were wet and the soles of your shoes were dry. But I explained that to you, Mike. You told me you heard a whistle for a cab, too. Let me stick my neck out to the cops about that. Find out from my mother she couldn't whistle. Never whistled a note in her life. But I did hear a whistle. Why'd you throw that buckle out of the window at McGinnis? I threw the buckle out the window like a guy picks up a stone and throws it at a tin can or kicks a lamppost when he's mad. Brother, you picked an awful bad time to get mad like that, Charlie. Are you sure you knew what you were doing? You get those spells, you know. But I loved her. I loved her. What are you hiding on a dump like this for, then? You don't believe me. Well, what are you going to do about it? Tell the cops where I am so they'll come and get me? Oh. Uh. Then what? I'm taking you back to our place. You're coming back with me if I have to drag oh, you? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. So you bought a gun with the dough I gave you, huh? It's great. I'm fighting for my life now, Mike. Don't come close to me. But it's gonna be you or me. It's gonna be you. Might as well be hung for two murders as one. Is that your idea? No future in that, Johnny. You ought to know. Why don't you go ahead and pull the trigger? I'm only your roommate. Better get out of here. Somebody might have heard the shot. Come on, let's go. Who is it? Hi. Alex follows me over here. I had to tell him what was going on. Hasn't there been enough tragedy around here without you asking for more? Hey, look, I didn't ask you to get mixed up in this thing, but as long as you're here, do you mind letting me handle it? Haven't you got any better sense than to try to take matters in your own hands? We've got a police department to take care of a thing like this. You've got no right to jeopardize other people's safety. Alex. Alex, wait. Don't let him, Mike. Don't let him. You can talk to Dixon when he's behind bars just as well as you can now, and a whole lot safer. Police headquarters. Put that down. Back. Are you crazy? You're leaving us with a desperate man. Yeah. Watch out for him, Johnny. He might be trigger happy. Do you live here? Yeah. Last Monday night, a week ago tonight, it was foggy. Somebody called a cab from this house by whistling for it, like you just did. Is that you? Probably was. I take a cab every night, rain or shine. The only way I get to work on time. What do you do? I'm in the floor show at the karaoke club. What's your name? Leonora Waters. I gotta go now. I'm on at 12.05. I've been disturbing people by whistling for a cab. I'll sit down. Get away from that door. John, listen to me. You were right about that whistle. Please, for your own sake. You don't need that gun. Stay away from me. I need help you, don't you understand that? Get away from me. And don't anybody try to front me. No, Johnny! You're just making it tough on yourself. Cops will pick you up sooner or later, you'll be convicted on circumstantial evidence. Come on, back. Oh, no! Don't try to follow me, Mike. I'll let you have it. So help me, I will. If you leave like this, there's only one thing I can think. You did kill Linda. I'm all mixed up myself. Maybe I'm going back. Yeah, it's your funeral. Guess you gotta eat. Here. Oh, no. Oh, sit down a sec. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're gonna pull that trigger and be sorry. Throw it back up here. Come on, I'm not gonna follow you.
hope you're satisfied. How did it happen? Alec went over to the phone and called the police. Johnny jumped him and took the gun. There wasn't anything I could do. Why didn't you listen to me in the first place? When you got a gun on a man, you don't fool around with a telephone. Gonna turn up, huh? What do you do, step on it? I don't know. Well, we found out one thing anyway. Johnny did hear somebody whistle for a cab. There's a girl downstairs been whistling for a cab every night. What does that prove? He's heard that whistle every night. It's an alibi, that's all. When you're a little older, my boy, you'll learn to stick to your own business. From now on, the police will take care of this. Come on, Estelle. Maybe he's right. Good night, Mike. Sorry it didn't work out. See you tomorrow, huh? Yeah, I'll call you. Night. Night. Mr. Carr. Hi, Jake. Working late. Yeah, you have to do this kind of a job after people go to bed. You know those women in these apartments that won't use this shoot no more? I've been carrying the trash out by hand ever since that girl was killed here. It's getting me down. Think you can fool them with a little paint, huh? Well, I can get rid of the marks where somebody tried to shove that girl's body down the chute. That's what bothers the tenants. They don't like to look at. What kind of marks, Jake? Just scratches. Now, let's see. Yeah. Right here. Uh -huh. Like see. Yeah. Fresh paint, too. I only painted this the day before it happened. What color was it before? Brown. I was out of brown, so I'm using baby blue now. Had some left over from Mrs. Cotter's bathroom. Nice color, baby blue. Oh, the cops got pictures of it. Hi, Jake. Good night. Right in, Mike. Where have you been? Down the hall talking to Jake. Where'd you come from? We met Mr. Heller outside. Alec phoned for him, remember? We told him about Johnny and you and... Where? Yeah, you had Dixon here, huh? Yeah, still be here if good old Rover hadn't gummed it up. You mean if a girl hadn't whistled for a taxi? Yeah. Yeah, I know all about that. Her name's Waters, but it's a bum steer, Mike, believe me. The trouble with my job is that everybody thinks he can do it better than I can. Why didn't you let me help you pick him up? I knew him better than you did. I thought maybe I could get him to talk. Okay, Mike. Dixon's your pal. You've been trying to protect him. That's what you were doing all along, protecting him. What are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me that oh, I... Oh, no, I'm not trying to tell you anything. I want you to tell me. You're the one that wants to play detective around here. Go ahead. Suppose we start with a week ago tonight, the night of the murder. Where did you go? McGinnis's. She was with me. After she left you, what did you do? I walked around for a little while. Why didn't you go home? I was a little upset. What about? About her. Oh, lover's quarrel, huh? Ah, she had me on a merry-go-round. You know that isn't true, Mike. It's all in your mind. You mean she was still going for Dixon? Yeah, Dixon and ten other guys. Eleven. If you want to include Mr. Trumholt. I've heard all I want to hear. I'm getting out of here. Sit down. How about that, Mr. Trumholt? What are you driving at? I've lived with the Mitchell family for a good many years. It was my home. Those two girls were like my own daughters. But Estelle was your favorite one, wasn't she? What are you insinuating? There are a couple of other things, too. Your room is near the front door. You could have slipped in and out a dozen times the night Linda was killed. I've already explained how I came in at 8 o'clock and talked to Mrs. Mitchell. And at 11.30, when she came and knocked on my door and told me that Linda wasn't in yet, I was already in bed. Maybe you've already asked him all these things. But if you ask him about his fingernails, look at him. Torn off and filed down to the quick. Why did you feel that you had to do that, Mr. Trimble? Oh, I've always... I'll tell you why. Because you got paint on your nails from the incinerator shooting this building when you tried to You're get... You're crazy! Or maybe it was tar. Power out of the barrel on the roof when you try to get rid of the body. Oh, you can't be enough of those shenanigans, Tom Holt. You are in luck with her, aren't you? You don't understand.
understand what? You couldn't possibly understand what I've been through all these years. How I've loved this girl. Waited for her to grow up. She promised to marry me one day. Why? Tremble told us the whole story. Not very pretty either. How Estella tied him hand and foot with his own heartstrings, while she too timed him by running around with a lot of younger guys, including myself. But a terrible mistake had been made. Linda was killed instead of Estelle. And Tremho still had murder in his heart. I guess Hella figured he could break him down and get a confession because he took him in. And I went out to find Dixon and tell him he was in the clear. just in time. They took him over to the army hospital, got the kinks out of him, and put him back to work. Doing all right now. Do you ever see him? Once in a while. We just say hello and let him go at that. What about the girl? She got under my skin like no other dame ever did. I wasn't in love with her, but I, I couldn't let her alone. Know what I mean? I know a lot of dipsos that hate the taste of liquor. Yeah, I guess so. I ought to get off this stool and walk out that door and just keep going. Why don't you, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, why don't I? So long, Tim. Thanks for listening to me and letting me get it off my chest. I feel a lot better now. It's okay, Mike. So long. So long. I'm sorry I'm late, darling, but you didn't mind waiting, did you? You timed yourself perfectly. Come on, let's get out of this dump. What are you doing down here, slumming? What's on your mind? Let's go up to my place. Your place? Oh, I have a little apartment of my own now. Nothing fancy. Come on, quit stalling. I've been waiting for you for six whole months. I'm not going with you. What's the matter with you? It's all over, Estelle. Remember old Tim? I just got through telling him the story about Johnny Dixon and Linda, your mother and you and me. They all came out on top except you. I had to tell him the story to see where I stood. Yeah, even I came out on top. You're crazy. Make up your mind. Are you coming with me or aren't you? No. Oh. Suit yourself. Mike, let me go. Just come across the street with me. The old place. Where Linda died. Remember? <laughs> I'm hurting you just a little bit and you're crying. What about the rest of us? We aren't crying. You did a good job on us, Estelle. Just a little girl from a neighborhood street. What a laugh that is.
Who is it? Don't tell me you've forgotten me already. Is that you, Helen? Who else? You got a gun? What would I do with a gun? What's the idea? Come on out. Turn on the lights. What do you call this gang? Cops and robbers. Very funny. Where'd you come from? I was right behind you, Mike, all the time. A whole six months. You never did settle down for very long in any one place, did you? Guilty conscience, Mike? What are you trying to say, Helen? Remember this? No. Ah. You've seen it, Mike. In fact, you had your hands on it. Linda wore it the night you killed her, thinking she was Estelle. You nuts. It came off her neck when you tried to cram her down the incinerator. But it didn't go down the chute. It only went part way down. Stuck. Jake, the janitor, just found it a couple of days ago. What does that make me? A murderer. And your fingerprints all over. Just as pretty and clear as anything you've ever seen. Let's go someplace where we can talk about it, shall we? How many guys are you going to pinch for this, Ella? Oh, you mean Tremholt? I only held him for a couple of hours. He's living in Detroit now. I just had a postcard from him the other day. How nice. You first. You know, Mike, this is the first time I've ever seen a murderer return to the scene of his crime. Pretty corny.